recently on the Spectre Creative channel, I made a video about people, actors, characters who do not want to be made as action figures. And I talked a lot about this guy, Tom Cruise. And in the comment section, I was very much overwhelmed by people pointing out that Tom Cruise has had action figures like this Mission Impossible figure of Ethan Hunt. But I think if you look closely at the actual portrait sculpt, which is what the industry calls the sculpt of the human face, they call them portrait sculpts. There are people who specialize in being portrait sculptors in the toy industry. You will see that that really looks absolutely nothing like the source material. It may be called Ethan Hunt, it may be branded Mission Impossible, but Tom Cruise it is not. And the same thing has occurred with the Lego series. There has been some Mission Impossible Legos over the years. And again, lots of people commenting in the previous video that, well, you know, of course Tom Cruise has had, had action figures. He's had Lego figures. And this made me realize, well, let me do a video going over legal issues with likeness rights and actually kind of explaining a little background on that because that's what this channel is all about, clarifying toy stuff. So let's talk about likeness rights. Likeness rights in general is the ability of a toy company or really any manufacturer to make product that looks like an actor or actress. Actually, I believe actresses are just also called actors technically, but you get the point. So something like Game of Thrones with these Funko 6-inch figures, those actually look like Jon Snow and Daenerys. And if you look at, you know, Kit here playing Jon Snow, yeah, they did a really great job. And one of the things with Game of Thrones and the licensing is the actor likeness comes with the license to make Game of Thrones. But this is not universal. Take a vintage movie like Airplane, which I noticed in the previous, which I talked about in the previous video, and this license does not come with actor likenesses. Other large brands like Star Wars does, especially with the new movies. Obviously, if it's a masked character, like character, character, try that, Scott, English is much more better, like Darth Vader, it doesn't matter. But when you have human characters like Luke Skywalker here on Tatooine, well, you have to have likeness rights because you want the figure to look like Mark Hamill, especially now where we have, you know, amazing hot toys and things like that that really look like the actors. And looking at, you know, early versions of Luke back in the late 70s, early 80s, even with the limited sculpting that they had back then, the figures definitely looked more or less like Mark Hamill. The actors may not have had approval rights, but by being in the film, part of the contract was signing over your likeness rights. So same thing with Harrison Ford. He, being in Star Wars, would have signed over his likeness rights. Granted, the figure did go through a bit of a change because even Kenner and Lucasfilm were able to note that their first stab at doing a Han Solo head was not quite right. So he has one of those infamous second heads in the vintage series. And then, of course, there's other Han Solos that have, well, shall we say, other issues besides just having a head that isn't quite right. The president's neck is missing. So as toys evolved throughout the 80s and 90s, portrait sculptors sculpting or sculptures got a lot better. And there were other lines where heads evolved, like in the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves line, the original head, much like with... Uh, the Han Solo figure was updated for a head that looked a little bit more like Kevin Costner. And of course, you know, this creates variants for collectors who want to have every version of every character, but the true goal is to get a likeness that's closer to the source material. Of course, in that same exact line, that Robin Hood line is notorious for having figures that not only don't look like the source material, but in fact just use random heads from previous toy lines. In this case, the Sheriff of, of uh, Nottingham used a head from a RoboCop toy that looks absolutely nothing like the source material and the uh, amazing actor who played the sheriff, but that's a video for another time. Other issues are when toy companies can't get likeness rights. For example, Toy Biz, when they did the first X-Man movie in 1999, the very, very first one that started this whole superhero craze, the one where they were all wearing Matrix suits, well, they didn't have access to the likeness rights for Patrick Stewart because Patrick Stewart was already in another toy line with another toy company, Playmates, Star Trek. Star Trek Playmates toys had the rights to uh, <laughs> his likeness. 
Uh, so that meant another company could not make toys that looked like Patrick Stewart. He was already being Jean-Luc Picard in the Star Trek line. So they had to make the Professor X figure look like him, but not quite like him. Of course, fast forward to today, and with the new Hasbro line, where his likeness is now not with Playmates, they can do a portrait sculpt that is dead on for Patrick Stewart, and it's probably one of the best Patrick Stewart sculpts, especially at 6-inch, that we've ever had. And it just shows not only the evolving technology, but how likeness rights can allow this. Okay, so let's get back to Tom Cruise and his infamous Lego figures. How is it that he has a rule that he can't have action figures, yet you still have things like Lego showing up in Tom Cruise-esque roles, or at least figures that are based on Tom Cruise playing characters in movies, in this case, Ethan Hunt in Mission Impossible. Well, there is an industry answer to all of this, and it's not just with Legos. And of course, you know, there's custom Legos too, like Top Gun, which never had Legos, but that's a whole other industry. If we're just dealing with official licensed Lego product, when they do characters based on people who are in movies, there is no such thing as likeness rights. They don't exist because of the form factor. The reason is, is that Lego toys don't have sculpting. There is no sculpting on the face. It's all done with deco. There is no way to make that face be Tom Cruise's face other than with lines and dots. So let's examine this a little bit further. Lego figures historically have basically been two eyes and a smile, at least classically. But over the years, we've gotten more and more specific faces to go with different characters. But more often than not, even with the addition of sideburns and a little quirky smile, you know who the character is based on what they are holding, what they are carrying. Call it the context clues. We saw an astronaut, we saw Sherlock Holmes, and now here is a World War II surrenderer. So the things that a minifigure holds, their hat, their accessories, their shirt, tells you who it is. So who is this? Well, as we back out, we can tell now that we have context clues in the terms of the accessory and the outfit that this is Han Solo. Well, the, the new Han Solo, maybe not the, the old Han Solo, but well, still Han Solo. How about this one? Again, it could sort of be anyone. We've just got some uh, beard and eyes, but as we pull out and we see the context clues of the Lego figure between the arc reactor and the second body next to him, we realize, oh, this is Tony Stark, a.k.a. Iron Man, who comes with a Iron Man body to plug his head onto. Hey, that's actually pretty cool. All right, how about another one? This face. Again, bearded guy, hair, two eyes, eyebrows. Could be a lot of different actors. And as we pull out and we see context clues, we can see from the outfit that this is Star-Lord, based on his jacket and his shirt and his neck piece, I guess. And it's interesting to note that since the actor who played Star-Lord played multiple characters, the same head has actually been used for that same actor. In this case, here is Owen from Lost World, played by Chris Pratt, but now the face with a different hair piece and a different outfit. Again, context clues telling you who this character is. So, while traditional Legos have been two eyes and a smile, adding painted details like mustaches and different hair pieces and different outfits, capes, clothes, hands, etc., tell you who the character is. And this isn't just a Lego thing. Other form factors also share this. So Funko is, of course, another notorious example of a form factor that does not have likeness rights. Sure, this looks like Billy D. Williams, and you can tell it's Lando Calrissian from Return of the Jedi based on what he's wearing. And, you know, yes, based on the face. I mean, you see the mustache, but he's just got those black eyes and a mustache to give away any facial detail. So continuing the Funko look, there was a Tom Cruise Funko that was supposed to be released for The Mummy. The, the new mummy, not the Brandon Fraser one or the 1930s one. But this figure was notoriously pulled from market because even though it does not have likeness rights, Tom Cruise still did not approve of this being made, and he has that clause in his contract that he's allowed to approve merchandise. So the figure was promptly canceled, and even though a few of them snuck out, the figure has now become kind of a holy grail for punk for pop, fun, or Funko Pop collectors, excuse me, reversing the words, 
that want a total collection because, well, this figure can now not be sold because Tom Cruise's contract, his people, himself, his agent, etc., had it pulled from market. And, of course, that just means it's now going to go for big dollars on the aftermarket because if you want a Nick Morton figure from The Mummy, you're going to have to shell out a lot of money for it because it's extremely limited because it was pulled. But again, no likeness rights. And unless the actor has a clause in his contract allowing control over merchandise, like Tom Cruise does, you're really not going to see that. So going backwards, the other example, if you're actually looking at a true likeness rights, like this six-inch figure from Ghostbusters of Peter Vankman, who is based on Bill Murray, or who you know is the actor of Bill Murray, he has likeness approval. But when we worked on the Ghostbuster line at Mattel, we actually had a lot of trouble getting him to sign off on this. And the fourth figure in the line was Walter Peck. We couldn't even complete the Ghostbusters line with Peter Vangman because it took a long time to get Bill Murray to sign off on his likeness. This is an example more like Airplane, where the property rights don't come with the actor likeness rights. You have to go after them separately. Some licenses, Game of Thrones, Star Wars come with, lic with actor license rights bundled together with the property. But in this case, Ghostbusters did not. So Walter Peck, who is an easier likeness right to have signed off because the actor actually lived on the same street as one of our contacts in Sony uh, customer uh, consumer products, he was able to just go a few doors down and knock on the actor's door. Bill Murray, a little harder. We actually had to track him down on a golf course and have him finally sign off on the face sculpt. And of course, once we had a Bill Murray face sculpt for Peter Venkman, we used it for every single Bill Murray figure, even expanding the, the sculpt for the 12-inch figure. It was the same exact sculpt because we knew, hey, once we have a Bill Murray sculpt, we're good to go. We're not going to try to do this again. It was hard enough the first time. And the same thing with Hasbro. So when Hasbro made their Ghostbuster line in 2020, to ideally have gone with the new Ghostbuster movie, but that's a whole other story, same thing. They would have needed to have each actor, or in the case of if the actor is deceased, that actor's estate would have to sign off on the likeness rights if they're not included in a package deal with the property. But for toy lines like Lego, they don't have to deal with that because there is no likeness rights. You're just painting face details, smiles, eyebrows, on a flat Lego head. There are no sculpted details, so there are no likeness rights. So Lego does not have to get likeness rights, nor does Funko. Granted, if there's an actor like Tom Cruise that has ironclad control over merchandising for his movies, that actor may have the ability to step in, as Tom Cruise did, and stop the Funko from being made. But Funko as a whole, as a form factor, does not have likeness rights. Same thing with Play School. It's another one that is just paint on a flat surface. There's no sculpted detail. And that's really the difference. If there's sculpted detail, you're dealing with likeness rights. If it's just paint on a flat surface, like with Lego, like with Play School, and here's another example with Mini Mates, again, you're just painting a flat surface. There's no likeness rights, no sculpting detail, therefore no actor approval on the figure. This really does give these type of companies a competitive advantage. They can get to market quicker, they don't have to track down the actors to have them sign off on their rights, and they can do characters easier because there's no sculpting involved. They just paint the face versus having a portrait sculptor make it from scratch and have to sculpt it. And obviously there's some exceptions in there, like I said with Tom Cruise, but outside of him, Funko pretty much can do a lot of different celebrities without having to deal with likeness rights because they are just a flat form factor without sculpted detail. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and it clarified likeness rights. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe and give it a like because it tells YouTube to share this with more people. Thanks for watching.